Hello everyone, welcome back to Understand, the puzzle game about learning the rules. Um, we look like we're getting close to the end of the World 3. So far, X10 has been the end of World X, and we're, we should be able to get to 310 this episode, I would hope. Um, I guess there's the question mark still. Um, before we do get started, though, I do want to um, mention a different thing, not related to Jonathan Blow at all. <laughs> um, which is just to recommend that if you like this game, you might enjoy the board game Zendo, if you're also into board games. That's Z-E-N-D-O. It's another game about like, um, you know, forming hypotheses and trying to test them and, uh, and or falsify them. Uh, except it's, uh, it's more like uh, you get to play both as. You get to make up the rules and you get to test the rules, depending, you know, like you take turns, right? So I make up a rule and, and the other players try to figure it out by asking me questions about it um, in sort of a similar way that you can ask, ask, you know, questions in quote by doing this, like, is this legal? No, it doesn't satisfy any of the rules. Uh, okay. Rule two. What is rule two? It's not like start and end on the same shape. It's not end on a circle. It's not use only the same, I guess it's sort of the same thing. It's not like any prohibition against using squares, is it? It might be. Maybe you're not allowed to use squares. That seems unlikely though. I mean, so far, obviously it seems like we're kind of filling up one of the shapes, but not the others, but that's kind of too vague to really be a whole idea. So this, yeah, also okay. Yeah, the second rule seems to be don't touch any squares, I think. Because something even like this satisfies the second rule, right? Um, the third rule seems to be the one that's like the main thing we're trying to, to prove, like cover all of a single shape, for example. Or, which, by the way, it does go off for squares, but not here. Ooh. Hmm, fill up half the grid? Fill up a symmetrical half of the grid? Okay, yeah. Make make the grid rotationally symmetric. After 180 degree rotation, perhaps. That's a plausible third rule. Okay, sure. And we think the second rule is no tri no squares. The first rule, I mean, it seems to be about completely using up all the circles, maybe. So if that were the case, we would draw something like this. No, that's not symmetrical. This. Okay, so it doesn't seem to have rotational symmetry. Right, yeah, the first rule is just use all the circles. You don't have to start or end on them, just use them all. Okay, so that, that may give me more flexibility to make some symmetry here in some way that I don't quite see. Like, um, well, if we're not using this square, which obviously we're not, but we are using this square, then this has to be one of our start points. And we have to get to the other circle somehow, and there's only so many ways to do that, right? Like, that's no good. That's no good. That's good. Don't understand why yet. There's a few possible candidates, like stay near the edge, but that doesn't fit with 3x's theme of, like, dividing up the grid in some way. Leave exactly three spaces uh, unfilled? It seems unlikely. Yeah, so we, we knew already that this was an acceptable shape for a line, but we don't know why. Okay. 
away? Am I meant to like, no? So far, each square is in an area with three total spaces, so we could maybe do that. Okay. Sure. Then this would be okay. Okay. No circles. So do whatever you want. Just prove you really know what's going on with the squares, huh? Well, I don't, but here's my guess. Hmm. I guess that thing in the middle we could maybe do without somehow. Um, but it's not so clear how. Yeah, this is going nowhere fast. So I still haven't really figured out what I'm meant to do with the squares. <clears throat> what the third rule is. I thought for a while it was something about symmetry. I guess we could, we can't really check that here, right? There's no way to be symmetrical. Well, I mean, sure, you could do that, I guess, but I don't think that's what they're asking for. Well, I probably should have completed it, huh? Just in, in case, yeah. So what would disrupt this? I assume this is no good, yeah. What about that? That is good. Which which makes some sense because it seems like the third rule is somehow about squares. And we've learned that an area with three spaces in it is valid whether it has one or three squares. And so it makes some sense that it would be valid with two squares as well. So far, every example we've seen has the squares encased in blocks of exactly size three. <clears throat> but we tested that and found that it was no good. Well, that's not true. We found that it's not sufficient. It might be necessary. I don't know why I'm so fixated on starting here. What if I started up here? Mm, mm. I can't really make the shapes that I want this way. Splitting this guy up is kind of like maybe the main challenge. So we still think no touching the squares is important. And anything we do uses all the circles. So that's the first rule going off. I still don't understand the third rule. It seems to involve, well, It seems to be about the shape of the regions in which there are squares, right? Because here the region is like, okay, you could say we're using up half the board, and here we're using up half the board. But here we're not. They're making us draw a region of size three around the square. Is there any other way we could have done that? I don't think there is. There's this actually, which is interesting because yes, the third rule is still satisfied, the first rule isn't, but it shows that this shape of size three is also okay, which I think we already found out from the next puzzle. 
Um, but it, it shows that it cares about the shape around the square, I think. Like, what else could we do to test this? We could draw that. Ah, this is interesting. Because this has the same shape around the square, but doesn't satisfy the third rule. This being blank somehow violates the third rule. So perhaps there's something about all unfilled regions must satisfy some property. And the property could be something like they must have exactly three spaces and also a square. You know, seems a little bit far-fetched, but I don't see any counterexamples yet. Uh, this grid is too small to produce a counterexample. How about this one? What could we do here? Nothing much, right? I mean, we could we could do this, I guess, and that shows that it really does care somehow about the size of the regions, probably, or the shape of them. What well, doesn't help us prove or disprove the notion that that we care about regions and not about squares? Hmm, what about this? Okay, did we try this already? This seems important. I think we did try it, but didn't really pay enough attention to it. Because I bet this is no good. Yeah. So I think, I think the rule is that each unfilled region must be of size three. The number of squares in it is totally immaterial. Uh, the squares are only there as obstacles to not draw into, not as things that have to be boxed properly. So, okay. If we need each of these to have size, each region to have size 3, I could do like... I hate this middle square. It's, what if I start from there? <laughs> I could do something like that. That's size three. That's size three. That's size three. Oh, okay. So I didn't even need to refine my understanding of... Oh, I did, because I found a way earlier to put all the squares in regions of size three. But it had a hole, I think, in the middle. And so I needed to understand that that hole was the problem before I could understand this solution. So we have these circles and we need to make white space regions of size three, right? Mm, well, this is no good. I guess it could be if you went around here last. No, because then this would be a problem. So don't start up here, that's my opinion. In fact, probably don't ever go up there. In which case, how is this guy ever getting finished? Maybe I could do this. No, I can't. Because there's no way to satisfy this one and this one if we've drawn the graph this way so far, or the grid, the line. Uh, yeah, that's, that's true. I could do the... No? Yeah, these two are tricky. They're so close to each other. If you don't fill in both of, like... Hmm. <sighs> right, because something like this, I guess would be a possible ending, right? A way to separate these two. Might be a little bit tricky to get back down into this area, but 
but let's say we try it. Ugh, not quite. I can't get these two squares to agree with each other. I need to like jump to this square. But I, I think that coming through here is important. And if I'm doing that, I want to start here. Or I don't know if it's important, but it seems like a good avenue to explore anyway. This is what I just did, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. No, it's actually even worse. This is what I just did. Well, could I start here? I don't think so, right? Because now when I come up here, this guy is too cramped. What if I go this way and then fill this in later at the end? Obviously, I don't come in through here. I come in through another path. But then I could do something like this. Um, hmm, problem is, if I'm coming this way, hmm, there's no way to give this guy three spaces if I come up through the top. I'll have to come down through here. What if I went more like that? There we go. Oh no, now that the one on the, on the bottom right is broken. Wait, uh, I couldn't fix it by just going this way because that shrinks it by size two. And we already looked at starting this way, right? Like a hundred times. I'm kind of wondering if there's some way to make this region up here, like, stay an unfilled-in region, and if maybe that's helpful somehow. But it's really hard to do, because you have to pick up this circle and still, like, come down here to split up these squares, and then... Like, there's there's not really... Oh, I'm, I'm so dumb. The whole point was to not draw this area in. Yeah, that's impossible, because then you can't ever split. Well, no, you could start here, I guess. You could do that. But there's not going to be any way to split these two up properly now. Yeah, this is just awful. OK. I do sort of wish that they didn't have puzzles at the end of a region where, like, actually solving the puzzle is the hard part, which is a silly thing to say about a puzzle game. But this isn't a puzzle game, right? It's a game about learning the rules. And I think, like, this did a good job of demonstrating that I understand what the rule is. Here, I have to understand the rule and also solve what seems like a sort of difficult, open-ended puzzle about it. With no obvious hints to like how to do it. Um, yeah, this is no good. These two are key, I think. Understanding how to solve them would, would make my life a lot easier. And that's why I did this. I was like, this is, there's just not many ways to put this guy in a region of size three, right? That does it, but you know, we looked at that. Um, that, I guess, is an interesting approach that I don't think I've tried yet. Um, yeah, 
look at that. Yay, we did it. Okay, cool. Uh, let's try 310. Okay, there's only two rules. How hard could it be, right? Uh, both of these are correct, so we don't we don't have to follow this line. No touching these things might be a rule. Hmm. Exactly two of these things in each open region, maybe, and we solved it. We satisfied it by making there be no open regions. Yeah, that, that, that seems to satisfy the second rule. It's like two of these in each region, maybe. And the first rule is don't don't cover any of them up. Well, that would be a very easy 310, so I must be misunderstanding something. Oh, right. Uh, OK. So just fill the whole thing in. Exactly two shapes in each region, and they must be the same shape. And also, it's not don't fill in any of these guys. It's don't touch any shapes. Um, except we've seen this before, and it's impossible, right? To get the squares to connect and also the circles to connect. And if we're not allowed to block them off, ooh. What's this all about? In each open region, the number of each shape must be two. Or must be even, perhaps. Well, let's test the must be even hypothesis. No, this does not seem satisfactory. So must be two means the tricky part is getting the squares to connect up, right? So we could do that, that's fine. Like that? Okay. It's nicely symmetrical as well. Not the shape the line made, but the shape uh, everything else made. I guess, hmm. Let's make it a slight bit <clears throat> more symmetrical just by including, there you go. Now this region is symmetrical as well. Okay. So, we need three regions, at least. Um, it might be interesting to start here, actually, just cordon off three of the squares, two of the squares, and see if you can do two of everything in each remaining region. Um, yeah, easy, actually. Oh, did I leave one of them solved incorrectly? Yes. All right, well, 310 was super easy, given how hard 39 was. Like, what was with the ordering of that stuff? Anyway, on to three question mark. We've got more shenanigans here, presumably. Uh, I'm pushing the square when I go through it? Yes. And if you push it into something... If you push it into another shape, it won't move, or the edge of the grid, but otherwise it will. Fascinating. I'm a little surprised there are five rules here. Start on circle, end on square. Don't go through any of these dudes. Um, probably something about shapes in unfilled regions maybe like i can do this and it won't be any good um but this is probably fine 
So it's it's the same kind of rule so far, anyway, that we just saw in 310, except that the square moves around, and so you have to track it down. But there's still one rule I don't get yet. I don't think that rule is, by the way, lol, the square moves. We have like start on circle, end on square. One of these somewhere is divide these into regions of size two. And then there are still two rules left that I don't know, but I've been following. You guys move? Yeah, they do move, okay. Ah. Okay. So we still we have to push them around to get them into the into the places where you can make the right size regions out of them. How how long is this level, by the way? Three seven is where it ends. Do these guys move? They do. Does every shape move? Maybe they all move. Uh so this. Hey, come back here. Ah, I left this area unfilled. Okay, so maybe... Hmm. That's a little tricky. Yeah, that's like super tricky actually. Well, wait a minute. Why is that invalid exactly? I I remember the rule as being like each unfilled region needs two of every kind of shape that's in that region. But I didn't I mean I guess it's also important that every let's go back to 310. Did every region have to have shapes in it? I can't remember if we ever found any, like, if we made any mistakes by not putting shapes in a region at all. It would be easy to test that, like, well, no. Anyway, I think the problem is this area here. I think you do have to put two shapes into every region of some shape. It means we also have to divide this into only two regions. Good heavens, okay. I think this is going to be a disaster if I start this way, isn't it? How do you get, yeah, you have to be able to push one of the shapes down somehow, right? Like that or something? Well, that's not going to work. There's now no way to cut these two off. Oh, whoa, 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 look at that. You can push it into a, a region and it lights up. You can push it into a line? How did I not notice that before? You can't push it into a shape or into the edge of the grid, but you can push it into a line. I don't want to do that now. Um, but good to know. Well, this is illegal because I'm never going to be able to fill this region up, so maybe like that. I'm never going to be able to separate them this way. Ah, you can push them in clusters for what that's worth. Man, how did I solve this at all? <laughs> uh, 
Not like that. That is, how did I get the shapes grouped correctly before? It seems really hard all of a sudden. Ah, like this. Probably something about like knot theory that describes the ways you have to loop around the shapes or something. But I don't know anything about knot theory, so it won't be very helpful, I'm afraid. So let's just double check. Oh no, that's not that's not ever gonna be any good. Never mind. Okay. Is this what I just tried? It is, right? Yeah. Okay, now there's only two regions, right? Okay, there we go. So I just need to like get these two close to each other while making sure to cover all, not leave gaps on edges. I don't have to do anything in particular to get these two close to each other. Really? I thought like this would be legal. Aren't we supposed to have two of every shape that's present in a region? It's allowed to have multiple different shapes in a region? Maybe not. It was in 310, but maybe it's not in three question mark? That's true, right? In 310 we, uh, we did this. We put two squares and two circles in the same boxes a couple times. Wait a minute, what the hell is this? There's no shapes to work with at all here. I'm just skipping ahead to try and understand the rules better. Of course, that's no good. What is this fifth rule? The fifth rule seems to want two shapes in every pattern, in, in every region, right? Uh, okay, sort of difficult to falsify that or to test that with uh, on this one, except this way. How could I confirm that? This also satisfies that. What about this? The, th the fifth rule doesn't like it, which makes sense. Uh, do they have to be the same shapes? I don't think so. So I think we need two shapes in every region in the fifth rule. It doesn't like a region with four shapes, right? Uh, how would I even make such a region here? Like so? Yeah. Okay. So start on circle, end on square. Exactly two shapes in every region. But I think they have to be the same shape. One of these other rules is about them being the same shape, right? Uh, which rule might that be? 
Oh. This satisfies no rules. So it's, oh, that's because this region isn't finished. Yeah. So two shapes in every region. This guy's happy with that. Um, even though they're different kinds of shapes. But... Here, I think this fourth rule is every region must have only one kind of shape. Exactly one kind of shape, because we know empty regions are also illegal, like, uh, like, mm, like so. But this satisfies the third rule? That's the one I don't know yet, right? Start on circle, end on square, two shapes in each region. Each region contains exactly one kind of shape, which we've broken here and here. And then this third rule. What is that all about? How else can we like not satisfy the third rule? This satisfies the third rule. So does this. This doesn't. This doesn't either. But this does. Oh, is... Mm, is the third? No. So all singletons satisfy the third rule. The third rule must be something about the path that you take. Well, it doesn't have to be, but that would be simple. This satisfies it. These all satisfy it. This satisfies it. Now this doesn't. No passing through other shapes? Any shapes, rather? Only the start and finish ones can be... That makes sense. Yeah, okay, that's my hypothesis for these five rules. Start on circle, end on square. Don't go through any shapes, except the ones you start and stop on. Each region must have only one kind of shape. There must be two shapes in each region. Now, does this meet with my hypotheses? Yes. I have one gigantic, horrible region, and both of my region-based rules are upset about it, as I would predict. How about this, what I've just drawn? Yeah. Right, the third rule is okay with this because I haven't gone through any shapes. But as soon as I do this, it's mad. Okay, so I think those are the rules. And I just have to actually solve this puzzle, which is not easy. Maybe it is, I don't know. Well. Yep, turns out it is. Ah, <laughs> I forgot the square ran away. Okay, um, but. What was the idea here? Okay, great. The funny thing is, this is exactly what I would have guessed to do, like, once I saw that putting two in each, 
one giant region with two of everything was no good. This is the thing that's like obviously what they're trying to make you try to do. But I wanted to prove like why that was correct, so I didn't waste a bunch of time on it. I ended up wasting more time. Uh, okay, and so here we just have to fill in the grid, right? Make sure there are no regions. Easier said than done. And I think we do have to start on the circle. We can't do some nonsense like this, can you? No. We have to start on the circle. That's what it says right there. It also violates the third rule, no pushing through things. Okay, so start here. If I if I if I loop around like this, I think I'm dead already, right? Because I have to come up here. Well, wait a minute, maybe this is fine. No, because there's now no way to get the square. So once, once I come up here, I have to go there. Then I have to go to the top to stop it from being isolated. And then I have to go here. And I have to go down to stop that from being isolated. And so on. I have to do all this if I loop around. Um... Then I have to come here. And now I can't go down because this will get isolated. So I have to go this way, and this way, and this way, and this way. And all these moves are forced until eventually I end up at a losing position. Oh, that's right. I also have to push the square into the edge. I can't push it into me. Hmm. Into the line, rather. OK. So what if I start this way? Then it's symmetrical, so let's assume I go up. Now I have to go up. I have to do at least this much, I think. Actually, it's pretty well forced, isn't it? What you do for a lot of the time. Now is the first time I have a choice, I think. Is it a real choice? If I go left, I think I'm dead because I can't get the square to sit still long enough to pin it. Yeah, so I'd have to go right. And again, I'm trapped. I can't get the square to go where I want it to. So I think we proved that going left is no good. We just can't go that way first. I also proved that this is no good, but that's a particularly like, uh, it doesn't prove very much because maybe this is okay. Maybe this is okay, right? I've proved that the left, the first step can't be left, but I haven't proved that it can't be right. I just proved these can't be the first five steps, which is not that compelling. So what if I try going up, which again, by symmetry is the same as going down. So if I had to guess, I'll find out this is impossible because then there would be two different solutions, which feels a little bit messy, but I don't know. I guess there have been multiple solutions to a lot of these puzzles. So now there's a lot of choices I could make here that all seem not totally dead, right? If I go left, you know, I, I kind of have to come up here or here, but they both seem possible. If I go up, likewise, I can go left or right. Left seems a lot easier because it's going to be hard to push the square into this region. Yeah, in fact, it should be impossible. But is this possible? I, if I go up, up, left, this much is forced. And so is this. And then I have to come down, and so this is forced, and so is this. And this. And then I'm dead, right? Yeah. So I think up, up, left is no good. I had to make completely forced actions after that that eventually led to a dead end. So what about up, up, right? It's a little harder. 
God, there's another puzzle after this? Are you kidding me? This is harder because there are still two possible things that might happen. Did we already look at like up left? We haven't. Ugh. But it should be pretty easy, right? Yeah, now there's a problem. I have to go both left and right, and I can't do both. Okay, so up left is no good. Up right? Hard to tell. There's, again, a lot of choices you could make here. This would be one of them. Yeah, this is, this is a dead end. We could go down, as far as I can tell. And then there's, again, multiple choices. Ugh. So maybe we should work on proving, like, that moving right is impossible as our first move. And then if we do that, we can go back to making proofs about moving up. Because the nice thing about going right is that there's still, like, I don't know, there's not that many legal options yet. Up and down are symmetrical. Right seems a little bit weird, but not impossible. Um, so if we go up, ugh, the problem is like, what do you do now? There's too many choices. Well, up is no good, isn't it? So once we go here, I can't fill this area anymore. So right up, we can't go up. Going right seems pretty hopeless, but maybe it's not. I guess we would, at this point, have to push the square, right? Because if I don't, if I leave the square there, then any approach to it will push it into a line, and that's no good. You know what? What if I just, like, can I just do this? No, not quite, huh? Oh, also I can't write. Once I push it into a wall, I have to immediately fill it up, don't I? <sighs> not quite true. I guess you could push it into this wall and then later come back and push it into that one. Um, seems impossible. We can't make these like two by two grids in corners. They're bad, right? Because you can't ever fill both halves of them. Well, it depends where you approach them from, I guess. <laughs> from here, it's fine. Oh, right, we looked at this and it's never gonna work. This is no good. We already saw this is no good. This should be even worse. Yeah. Right, we looked at this before. Yeah, didn't we prove that going left is completely impossible to begin with? I think we did. So let's stop messing around with those. This, I think, is no good, right? It's, it's the same as this.
And it's just going to be impossible to get the square over here, which is where it has to go, if that's going to be your last move with the line. Right? That's kind of like the thing about this puzzle, I think, is that the last space you fill in, you have to be pushing the square while you do so, which maybe sounds obvious, but I don't know. It wasn't to me. And so you have to make like a little pocket to push it into somehow. This is no good. This is, yeah, yeah, yeah. So right up right is no good. We had that area in the top left that we can't ever fill. Right up up? just as hopeless so right if we want to go right it has to be right up left and i don't think that's any good going up would be suicide going left Also totally busted. So we can't go to the right and we can't go to the left. I'm pretty sure I've proved those. So we have to start up. Well, did I prove that right right is no good? I don't think I, I don't remember if I did actually. But it is. There's no way you can finish this. If you go right here, you're not going to be able to get to the square. If you go up here, you, you, you don't, you can't, yeah. So I think that this, did we try this already? I think we did. Yeah. So right, right, up, up is no good. Right, right, up, right, you can already see is no good. And right, right, up, left. If I go up, then this area will be impossible. So I have to go left. If I go up, there will be no way to corner the square, so I have to go left, and there's still no way. Yeah, so we can't go right, right. And we already tried right up and proved that it's no good. So this is, one of these two is a mandatory first step, and they're equivalent, so we can just assume it's up. Up, up? Seems pretty bad, doesn't it? You know, why am I assuming that I have to do this? I don't have to do that. I could do, I could come over here, right? Maybe? I mean, and no, because I can't ever get the square back over here. I could come in and fill it in, but I can't get the square there while filling it in. That's important. So up, up. There's definitely no way to get the square here, so I would have to come left. And there's no way to get the square to the bottom left either, so I would have to go this way, or this way. And there's no way to push the square both down and left. So we have to come up. <laughs> this is really weird. Right, you can't even chase it that way. I keep forgetting this. It, it doesn't stop when it runs into the line. 
That's really important. You have to push it up against a wall. That's why you can't... Well, no. This would be fine. <laughs> if we could push the square here at the end, except we can't. Up left? We're never getting the square to stop here. Here's what bugs me about this square, right? Suppose I somehow get here and I push it down to the, to the bottom edge. I don't think it's possible to solve the puzzle at this point unless this can be my last step. Because I can't both push it to the left and also have filled in the this area here. Because then I'd be pushing it into a line. Likewise, I can't push it to the right. Well, maybe I could if I'd already filled in all this area. But I can't have, if I'm assuming that I did this. There's no way to do this having just filled in this area. So I feel like we can't push it down or up except as a final step. And as a final step, it really sucks. I think it's impossible. So I think we have to push it into this wall before we push it anywhere else. And maybe that has to be the only push we make, although I don't think that's possible. Because we, we proved we have to go up. Well, okay, maybe this? No, the problem is you can't quite... Can't, can't fill in all the blanks over here, right? You can do something like that, but it leaves you a tiny little gap that I can't fill. Like, we looked at this and proved it's impossible, but I'm, like, doubting myself. Again, we've just got this tiny little gap. I don't think there's any way that I could, like, not start in the circle and be clever that way, right? Yeah. We would have to go here and here. And there's just no way for the square to end up in the right place. Yeah. So I still think you have to start up. And I think up, up is no good. Let me try up right. Oh, you know what? Ooh. I didn't manage to end on the square. Yeah. That's something I forgot about. You can push push it through another shape. What does this even accomplish? This does not count as starting on circle. Even though we did start on the circle. The circle moved after that. So I think that's no good. So up left forces this. And then we have to get the square into the top left corner, and that's just impossible, right? Yeah. So up left is no good. Up right? Well, let's look at up up. 
I'm forgetting already whether we proved this is impossible. It seems hard. We definitely would have to go here. And I think we proved that it's impossible to push this down and then left, but actually that's not true. So that proof was stupid. Well, no, maybe that, it's possible to do this, but it leaves this area unfilled, right? Like I want to push it and then double up here and then come back down, but I can't quite do that. So I think we can't leave this area empty. I have to come, I have to fill it in. And then the same argument applies here. And you could almost imagine like pushing it here and, and coming down this way, but that's also impossible. So I think up up left is 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 well, up up right is clearly impossible. There's no way we're getting the square here, so it would have to be up up left. And then you come down here, and we proved this is impossible and this is impossible. So it really has to be up right is our starting thing. Having done that, don't I have to come down here? I think I do, because I can never approach this from another angle. OK. I mean, this is sort of interesting. What if I push the square now? The problem is, right, I can't. The square won't stand still. Also, I can't get to it in the right way. So up, right, down could be something. But you can't go through the square next. You have to continue down if you're doing that. And then you can't go left, I don't think because there's going to be no way to have the last square that you fill be a corner. And if, like one that you can get the square into, right? The last square you fill will have to be one of these two, and you can never get the square to stand still there. So you can't, I think, come this way. And we already know this is impossible because now it's impossible to get to the square. Well, this again, so close. But I think upright down just doesn't work. Which would leave me with like upright right? Or wait, no, up, right, down, we, we said you have to go down because there's no other way to fill this square. But right doesn't work and down doesn't work. Well, no, I proved down doesn't work. I don't think I proved that right doesn't work. Once again, there's this little issue. Is there some wacky way that I can start somewhere else and then push the circle into that space? Because everything I've tried to do has left me with like one unfilled in area. And I think there must be some parity thing that's forcing that. What if I started, you know, um, here and did this? It doesn't seem on the face of it very useful. Um, but something of that nature could be kind of cool, right? Like what if I started here and then tried to push the circle into there after? Yeah, this actually seems kind of interesting, doesn't it? It's not quite there. Aha! Okay, so yeah, there, there, there must be some parity problem with actually starting where the circle is that I don't quite understand. 
and nudging the starting space into the circle resolves that. Oh my God, what a nightmare. This one looks horrible. Okay, we do have all the others solved, just double checking. I don't want this star to not appear, even though it would be easy to fix. I just don't want that demoralizing moment. <laughs> I don't know, it'd be a good problem to have because it would mean I had solved this puzzle, you know? Okay, so you can, remember we can push whole rows of these guys. Well, this is no good, yeah. Let me push these guys down a bit more before I start separating them. That's no good. There's no longer any way to separate these. Blech. Yeah, this is impossible if I do it that way. At least this way, there's definitely no trick about moving the circle or the square. Just about pushing around these little weirdos. So, okay, we did that. Great. But having done so, I can no longer push these guys anywhere. And if I don't push them, I'm dead. Hmm. Okay. Oh, that's almost an idea. Okay, okay, yeah. It's working. Except I... It's not working. <sighs> because... Um, wait a minute. Oh, can I actually fill this all in and... No! I just need to push you a little bit to the left. So what I want to do is like push this guy a bit. But if I do that, I lose the ability to push you and that seems pretty important. Yeah, I have to break up that cluster of three. That's just no good. They get stuck together forever. So is that. I have to do that much. And I think this is what I was just trying. What a funny little dude. Yeah. Hmm. So, I mean, this puzzle is symmetrical, right? We can either come at it from the top edge or the top corner. Coming at it from this side edge and side corner are the same, but there are like two side corners and two uh, top corners as well. Um, there's also the possibility that we could first come at it this way, unlikely as that seems. Well, I have to block these guys off and then, then it becomes hard to split up this group of four. So it seems better to come at it from a corner. 
probably, but that's not a proof, obviously. Okay, I mean, that's sort of nice, isn't it? Doesn't quite work, though. This is this is no good, we know that. Ah this guy gets stuck. Oh, this is almost good. Except these I haven't filled this region in. Is there some way I could have done that around here? Yeah, well, no. Yes, I could have ducked down here before doing all this, I think. And then I did something like this, right? Hey, we did it. Phew, okay, that was kind of a long video. I didn't think three question mark would take so long after 310 went by so quickly, but of course I was a fool. All right, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.